Raoul, the store development programme this year has really been quite extraordinary for Heinemann. The three stores we've covered have been described by Gunnar as being nothing less than a quantum leap for the business. How would you then define your retail strategy now? Well, it's uh, more a brand strategy than a store strategy, actually. And you know that we have built up the Heinemann retail brand uh, yeah, to have a presentation throughout Europe with our shops. And this year indeed was a major step. Uh, nevertheless, the shops have to differentiate because the consumer actually should identify, yes, I'm in the Heinemann duty free shop, but he should also identify or she should identify I'm in the Copenhagen Heinemann duty free shop or in the Oslo Heinemann duty free shop or Vienna or Frankfurt or all others actually. That means that needs a differentiation and uh, of course the regional touch uh, is an important issue. We have to prove at every place that we make the best out of it and that needs of course a dedicated design. Especially in, in Copenhagen and in Frankfurt we had huge and intensive talks about that to realize something which is only happening here and this is by design but as you know of course also by product and uh, we have just identified the volume of regional product. It goes up to 30% of turnover in some of our shops. So this is really... That's a very high figure. It's very high figure. It's really... Of course it needs space. Of course it needs dedication and presentation. But of course that's the most important issue to differentiate actually. The balance of the product mix on offer is also different between the Schengen and non-Schengen. We just look at Frankfurt, for example. Um, you know, you've really developed a robust fine food area yeah. um, and a spectacular wine offer in the Schengen area, which is not replicated in the non-Schengen area. Um, I mean, is that just part of your evaluation of the, the of the profile of customers going through? The difference which you see is not that it looks different. It's because we have a different consumer behaviour, actually. And uh, of course, uh, if, you, if you see the Delicatessen, for example, already a learning curve. Some international brands work very well in the non-Schengen. They are not so strong as we expected in the Schengen area. So we have, might change to local brands. So if you see the Delicatessen area, for example, it's an important issue that uh, we have to develop from uh, being a traditional duty-free offerer, really to the consumer demand, never forgetting premium products at a very low price. I just want to stay on the regional architecture that we've seen. I mean, it's actually quite stunning in each of the locations. Have you ever actually thought of creating a store that is solely designed uh, based on the lines of the regional architecture that you've employed? Uh, we could do it. I don't believe in that because, uh, as you have realised, we have now really uh, built some very big shops, more than 2,000 square metres. The next to come is Copenhagen the refurbishment with our brand design, which is 2,500 square meters. A place like this has to be organized. And we very much believe in this category before brand approach. And every category should have its, its own design to be really and easily identified. And if you make an overall regional design, I think it will lose just that. And fast and easy orientation is a very basic element of every of our shops. What is clear from each location is the sheer size and scale of the individual retail operations. Just how much does size matter to you? Well, and for Frankfurt it was very important actually. We have uh, more than 50 million people at the airport and our biggest shop so far was 1,200 square metres. And uh, the biggest turnover actually we achieved in shops which had only 600 square metres in Terminal B. So this of course was a major effort from Fraport and ourselves to get that. Uh, so it's what you have seen now is an improvement in Vienna. The shop was also relatively small. You could also argue we have just catch up to that what is normal in these days and have made a major step, of course, in one year at uh, those airports. Berlin will be 1,800 square meters as well. And now we have little boxes of 50 square meters, partly in the old Berlin Tegel. So automatically, of course, it's a huge investment, but into the right direction. This is important that, that every shop layout is designed according to the need. If you see Oslo, uh, by far the majority is Norwegians buying. And if you see Frankfurt, you see a wide variety of international target groups from completely different countries. Mainly more upmarket, this means the shop is also more upmarket, but of course EU and non-EU traffic in a different, yeah, in a different uh, design and destination and the non-EU traffic, of course, being very international from Russians, from Chinese, from other Asian countries, also, of course, a lot of Germans. Let's just go back to Frankfurt's A 
plus peer zone. I mean, what we've seen there are uh, some promotional areas that have certainly matured um, over the last couple of years. And in fact, the eau de cocktail promotion there is really significant because it is epitomised as the best of Trinity, where both you, uh, Fraport and suppliers have come together to produce um, a quite remarkable uh, promotion. How many more things like this are we likely to see coming from Heinemann? It's an answer on, on, on a couple of sides because we have internal uh, discussion, of course, about it. If you do actions like this, it needs a lot of effort. It's not the effort of a classical duty-free company. It needs different purchasing. It needs different, yeah, different sourcing. It needs different merchandising. It needs different approach and design. And, of course, it's a challenge. Uh, and you are right. Uh, we have picked up with these, what we call stages. Uh, if you see Hamburg, uh, the stages are now commercially three times as high as they were in the very beginning. So, so it's a big learning curve, actually. And yes, there will definitely be more to come. Moving on, the Heinemann and Me loyalty program has been going for something over a year now. Just how successful has this been? And how do you see online and digital connectivity developing with your customer base? First of all, we have now 65,000 direct addresses of customers. This we have collected in the first year and we had a careful start. Uh, so basically we are really on track half a year now, which is good. That means we are starting to get data and we are talking in this company about data we never before had, actually. How many money are people who are in the system spending against others? And I can say it's three times as high. So our, our system to approach really the frequent tra traveler to be a Heinemann and Mean member and not just collect some cards uh, and get members and members and members, starting with really those who are frequent flyers by frequent flyer Lufthansa card or whatever to identify them, is right. That means uh, ob obviously we are, we are catching a group which are really frequent customers in, in, our, in our team and through the tools we use to activate them, we can already see the turnover is growing. And this is only a first start. I would not say we have a huge volume of experience, but we know we are on the right way and communication of airport, this is what you say, digital business. I mean, just imagine five years ago, we didn't have any communication of airport. Customer came with a boarding pass, we tried to handle them in a good way, treat them in a good way, and get the money and say goodbye and I don't know you. Now we can communicate already 24 seven with those who we collect, and this will of course go on. So where do you see online purchasing going to in general? When all this came up, we said, oh man, we are investing so much money into our shops and now we are making pre-order other issues. People should go into the shop. But very obviously, we have a different clientele, a different target group, which uh, would normally not buy. So we, on the, we know that we are on the right way, actually. And, and you're right, communication uh, and, 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 and personality. As a Heinemann Duty Free brand, we, we, have, we have a family name, so we should have also a more than only in the shop contact to our consumers. And of course you're being quite proactive too in the area of direct on airport advertising. Now this is quite a departure uh, for Heinemann who've perhaps traditionally taken a rather more conservative approach to um, advertising. But there's clear uh, method in what you're trying to achieve here. Yeah, uh, the brand development, the development of the Heinemann brand has also changed a lot in this company. And if you see how can I advertise on or off airport without being a brand, if I only advertise for duty free, it would be for the whole market or for nothing. So building up our brand, uh, displaying it throughout Europe and then start communication is for us more, a more logical step than having been conservative actually. Uh, but there's a, a, a background which is more important. Uh, we are lacking penetration in Germany because of two opinions which are mindset. One is duty free has to be expensive because there is no duty free any longer. And the second one is, I'm not sure whether I'm entitled to buy or not. I have an EU flight. I better stay out. So we thought it's now the right time to heavily invest into this campaign, uh, which is very active. And uh, we got a lot of support by our airports, actually, uh, to build up penetration. The key issue is building up penetration for the future. And the campaign will be a long lasting one. And we are sure that will be a part of uh, building uh, penetration and increasing penetration. It's early days yet, but do you think the communication has actually started to work? Yeah, we have, we have one concrete information uh, on our arrival business in Hamburg, where you basically arrive on the level where the departure shop is, so you can buy. 
and uh, rival business has been picking up immediately after we started the campaign. So it's a very good initial sign. Uh, of course, after the campaign is over and next spring, we will make some analysis and to see how do we have to adopt uh, and what is the learning.